research. Dr. Robinette, I want to ask you a little bit about the importance of that. Is research in some form, in some capacity, a must? Is it how important is it? How much do you value research experience in somebody who's applying to medical school? Because maybe that person isn't fully re interested in research or in a career that involves that. So when it comes to research and you're evaluating and evaluating an application, you know, what emphasis do you place on it? What would you tell somebody who's sort of a pre-med and, and thinking, do I need to do research? Do I need to check this box? What do I do? Yeah. Anyone who's a pre-med, I recommend do research. This was a question that I saw too, that I recommend you do research outside of your classes. That be, like not just your organic chemistry lab, but actually go and volunteer and work in a lab. Um, it can be for one of your professors or somewhere else during the summer. We do not require research. So we accept people every year who have no research at all for our MD only program. We do have a robust MD, PhD and MD master's programs, which of course do require research. But you know, I've been on enough of these panels to know that Ohio State and Hopkins and there are plenty of great medical schools out there do require research. So whenever I am giving advice, I say just make sure you get some research experience. The, we like seeing it. So that's like one of the activities that we see that I'm interested in. So, uh, you know, to, we don't compare one applicant to another, but we want to hear what was your experience like. I mean, I have laughed out loud when some people are like, I tried to do research and none of it worked. So the lessons I took away <laughs> were the persistence or that this is not what I want to do for a career. Like, so, I mean, there's certainly lessons to be taken away. I think it can fit into the whole picture of what you want your career to look like. And it just shows that you are serious about maybe having considered basic science and decided it wasn't for you or wanting research to be an integral part of your career as a physician. So make it part of your story. We certainly you know, like reading about it, like to see what people's impressions were, what their takeaways were, um, but it is not required for our MD only program. And we accept people every year that have zero research. Awesome. Yeah, understood. And some people too, like research doesn't just have to be basic science research at the bench. It could be a lot of different types of things. It could be clinical research. It could be talking to people and getting information out there. Dr. Goodell, do you have any thoughts about research or how you view it on an application as well? Yeah. So um, I, it research is great because it does a bunch of good things or can do a bunch of good things for your application, even if you decide you don't want to do it for your career. Um, and I too have talked to people where, where the thing that they learned from their research project was like, uh, so I always thought that science was sort of, you know, certain and that's why I liked it. And it turns out, no, you can plan everything perfectly and it still doesn't work. Um, yeah, so research, one of the great things that research uh, tells us is something about your intellectual curiosity. So that's why I say like loads of different types of research are, are possible and will give us that message and allow you to kind of develop one of your interests. So you don't have to be interested in, you know, neurobiology or biochemistry and you don't, that's fine. But maybe, maybe your research is more in the realm of public health. You know, and so you get involved in some research projects that are like, oh, we are actually going to look at the impact of this new food program uh, that was located in this community health center to see if it actually improved people's diabetes, uh, whatever outcomes. Like that would be an amazing research project. And it's not the type of bench research that I think people think of if they're like, I don't like it, I don't want to do it. Um, by the same token, I have talked with some people who are, um, have, described fascinating projects. One person who um, did an independent research project for credit at, 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 during her, it was like a senior thesis that was all about the use of narrative in addiction recovery um, throughout history. It was fascinating and she knew everything about it. We had such a good conversation. So, and, and you know, um, she talked about how that impacted her and was she planning to be an addiction researcher? No, not necessarily. But what I got from that is like, here is somebody who is really curious, who wants to go find out more, who can work independently. You know what I mean? All these other things. So I, I also encourage people to do research, but just expand your definition of research and know that like, we're sort of taking from that research, whatever it is you give it. Like, we don't want you to do research because we're trying to see how likely you are to become a Nobel prize winner. Like, that's not the thing. We're just trying to see other things like, are, again, are you curious? Are you persistent? Can you work in a team? Can you, you know, it's, it's more like that. For us, the real value of research is, is the applicant knowing that research is happening and actually knowing how to apply what's coming out of the research. Um, medicine moves on research. 
and they've got to really know how to use it and however they find out how to use it, it is up to them. Leadership, on the other hand, every team's got to have leaders, but a good leader has got to know when to lead and when to follow, when to let somebody else uh, lead. Also, we, we run into um, students all the time who uh, get out and try to do their first real intubation and they have to move out out of the way in just a minute to let a respiratory therapist come in and say, let me do this before you hurt this guy. Uh, you, but you've got to learn and you've got to know, uh, there's got to, every team's got to have leadership uh, to be successful. So we like to see that this demonstrated and there's a bazillion ways it can be demonstrated uh, in, in the military, in sports, in the community, in their school, uh, organizational things. Uh, just a lot of ways that, that this can be uh, demonstrated and you don't have to be uh, a really high process lead, uh, leader but you've got to know the difference and, and how to be out front when it's your turn to be out front we we talked a little bit about check boxes and some of the deans you know they they mentioned that it's it's important not to do your application through check boxes right you should do things that you're passionate about and one of the things that i feel like students don't often like to do is, or maybe some do, but research. And they feel like research is this like really, you know, daunting thing. So Sana, I'm going to ask you, did you do research? And if you did, what was it about? Or how did you convey it? And if you didn't, how do you feel like that was, you know, taken on your application? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's one of the biggest anxieties a lot of pre-meds have about medical school apps because research is daunting. And even as a medical student doing research, I barely know what's going on. Um, so it is a confusing process and it is a hard field to tap into. I did have research. I actually was a transfer student. So I went to the University of Michigan for a year and a half and then I transferred to USC. Um, and so when I got into Michigan, I immediately joined a research program there and I did a little bit of research. And actually that's one of those things I didn't even put on my application. Um, and that's just to show that like if something is not meaningful to you, you don't need to put it on your application. And then when I went to USC, I joined a research lab uh, regarding pancreatic cancer and essentially building organoids, which are 3D models of tumors, putting a little bit of chemotherapy into it and seeing how those 3D models of tumors would react. Uh, and the reason that medical, that research experience was so impactful for me was because I had a good mentor. And that's something that I will tell every single person who wants to go into research do not have a scarcity mindset. Don't say yes to every opportunity just because you think another one is not gonna come up. I sent so many cold emails. I asked for a 10 minute phone call with every physician I emailed and I made sure I was genuinely interested in their project. When I got on, their, on a call with them, I made sure that they were genuinely interested in mentoring me and I asked what they could bring to the table to help me out. And my specific mentor, I told him, I want to make sure I can present something at a conference. I want to make sure I can get involved with writing a manuscript. And he was able to, throughout my two years there, guide me through the process and write me a great letter of recommendation. So though I didn't even talk about research very much in my interviews, just because it didn't come up very much, I was super passionate about it. And I think I got a great letter of rec and experience from it. Um, we have time for a few more questions. So the next one I'm going to kind of combine into one question to Clara which is about some of the tactics that are involved. And so, you know, people are writing here, it's difficult to find somebody to shadow, which is definitely true at times. It's difficult to get in touch with somebody who can pretty much allow you to be a part of their research, like a principal investigator. What are some of those tactics, Claire, that you used to get in contact with people? Is it just cold emails? Is it persistence and following up? How did you sort of navigate finding people to shadow, finding people to do research with and other activities that you might've done. Definitely. And it's hard, especially to, I'm, none of my family members are physicians. So I'm the first one to be at medical school. So I don't have any of these existing connections. Part of what I did was really leverage my friends who were juniors and seniors at my university who were also pre-med, maybe already got accepted to medical school and asked which physicians or research labs they joined who were have already worked with pre-medical students and used that as a starting off point. I also did a summer research opportunity back home at WashU, and there was a physician who I shadowed there and did research with and tried to network with them. And many physicians, they know other physicians too in different specialties. So I'd also ask them, is there any other 
um, physician you could connect me with in dermatology, for example, because I was interested in learning more about that. So leveraging your existing connections. And if there's a pre-med organization that you're a part of, sometimes they have like resources of all the physicians that people have shadowed in the past. And that's also a great resource as well. So those, in addition to kind of cold emailing and stuff like that, which definitely can be a little discouraging sometimes. And you just need to be persistent as well. One email isn't going to do it. Sometimes even as a medical student, I have to email my PI two or three times before they get get back to me because they're just so busy and their inboxes are always full. Um, and sometimes if it is conducive, maybe even just going to the practice in person, introducing yourself and seeing if you could find some time to speak with people who work there or the physician that's there. Those were such fantastic answers. This was clearly so helpful. Uh, we really want to thank all the panelists for being on today, for taking time out of your weekend to help answer direct questions. Uh, we got through so many questions. Obviously, everyone is going to be following you on social media and asking more. Um, this was just an incredible, incredible panel. Thank you all so much.